Welcome. In this video, I want to introduce you to two operators that affect integers, the increment and the decrement operators. So let's get started. So what's one thing that we often do in our everyday life? We often just count. We count things, right? If you all want to know how many dollar bills you got, you count them one at a time. One, two, three, four, five. Well, as you could imagine, when we write code, that is also another thing that we tend to do a lot. We want to count things. We want to count the occurrence of something. So these two operators, the increment and decrement operators, affect directly when we do some form of counting. So let's take a look at exactly how that works. So I'm going to change this. Here we are on the same CP, Learn CPP project. And I'm going to have, uh, can I live int? I would say int count is equal to zero, right? We typically, when we count, we start from zero. And here I'm going to change this to count. And let's change the message so that this makes sense. So count, and this will give us what value we have in count. So we run this right now, we'll have the value zero. If I wanted count to go up by one, what would I do? Well, I could just say something like count is now equal to whatever count used to be before. So count right now is zero plus one, right? So count at this moment, it would say count is zero. And then zero plus one, that would be one. And then I want this one to get stored back into the value of count. So now count changes from being zero to a one. So let's run this so we can see it. And here you see count is equal to one. Let me put this here. So now if I want to go and count even higher, what do I do? Count is equal to count plus one again. And what would this do? This would be count is equal to two. So we can count just by simply adding one. Well, the increment and the decrement operator is a thing that C++ has added that some programming languages do not have because it's not really essential. It is kind of just of a, a neat thing that C++ um, offers. So what I can do is I can change this count equals count plus one to simply using the increment operator. So the increment operator looks like this, count plus plus. So what this is saying is whatever value in count is, add one to it. So now let me delete this line of code and this line of code. And we should have what? We should have the value of one. So let's run this. And here we have count is equal to one. And if I do it again, then I have count plus plus and I do it one more time and I have count is equal to two. So Notice we just saved a couple texts, right? We were like about right here. Now we just needed two plus signs. It made it shorter. So this plus plus operator, this increment operator, it's just a nice way to keep counting things up by one or down by one if we use the opposite, the decrement operator. So what happens if I change this to minus minus, right? So the decrement operator would be minus minus. So if I do this, this will be what? This should be now negative two as you can see right here. So the increment operator is just two pluses. The decrement operator is just two negatives. Now, you might recall, let me, let, me, let me write this back. So let's say count is equal to count plus one, right? So this would look, this would be the similar to this, right? So I have count and I added one and I put it back in count. That's what this is doing. However, I could also say one plus count, right? This is, this is also completely okay. I can add one to the value of count, which is zero, which gives me one and put it back in count, which means I can also do this with the increment operator. I can put it at the beginning. So if I go and let me delete this line of code, this should also give us the value of one. Count is equal to one. So you can put the increment operator and also the, the decrement operator. Let's try it so you can see it. Here the decrement operator also works. So you can either put the decrement or increment operator either in front of the variable or behind the variable, and this will do the exact same thing in terms of counting. Now you might be wondering, that's it? Well, actually, there's also another benefit that the increment and decrement operator gives us. What happens if I do something like this? Let's say I have another variable and I say int result, and this is gonna be count the number of times that I have done something times 10, right? What will be the result of this? So if I come here and I change this to result and I change this to result, well, what is zero times 10? 
this is going to be what? This is going to be zero. So if I run this, zero times 10 is zero, right? Okay, now if I happen to put a plus plus right here, because remember, we're able to have long mathematical expressions, right? I could make this even farther by saying plus seven times count minus three. You know, I could make this as long as I want. So certainly I could put this operator right here. What would happen? Well, let's run this, just see what happens. I still get the value of zero. Now, you probably thought, okay, well, if count is zero and I do the increment operator, this is going to be a one, right? And one times 10, this is going to be a 10. So therefore, result has to be 10. Well, the reason why it was not 10 and instead is zero is because actually where you put the operator matters. If I put the operator in the back and I and I just leave it like this, now if I run it, now I actually get the value of 10. So when you use a variable with the increment or decrement operator, if the operator is in front of the variable, that gets computed first. So in here, count is zero, and then you increment it by one, so now it's a one, and then you do one times 10, and that gives you the value of 10 into result. However, if you put it at the end of the variable, what this does is it says, oh, this is at the end. This is at the very end of this statement. When this statement is complete, I will add one to count. So what this happens is I do count times 10. That gives me a zero. And now count gets incremented by one. So now again, this was what? This was zero, right? Zero times 10 is zero. However, now let's take a look at count. So I'm just going to say count and... Yeah, I'll just put count so we don't get confused. So we do count, and now count is actually what? The value one. So count indeed went up, but it went up by one afterwards. And if I put it in the beginning, as we did earlier, count still goes up by one, but count goes up by one before we do the mathematical expression. So if you use the increment or also the decrement operator, and this is put in front of the variable, what this happens is it first increments or decrements the value in the variable. If you put it after the variable, then what it does is it first does the mathematical expression or it first computes whatever line of code that you have here, and then in the end, it adds one to that count variable that you have, okay? So let me give you another example. I'm going to delete result right? And I'm going to say count here, right? And I'm just going to type count here, right? So this is, this will give us the value of zero. Okay. Let's, let's just see it. Why not? Count is equal to zero. Now I can come here and I can say plus plus. What does this do? Well, what this does is it says, okay, first I want you to print. I want you to show this message on the terminal. Count is whatever value is in count. And when you're done with that, I want you to add one to count, okay? How can we show this? Let's let's put this twice. So we're going to, and let's not do it on the second one, just for, for so no one gets confused. So now if I run it, the first time, the first message that we get, we should get the value of zero. The second time, we should get the value of one. Let's see it. Count zero, count one. Notice now count went by one, right? Okay, so again, it added one, after this happened. Now let's change it and put it in the beginning. Now what should we get? Well, first count will be incremented by one. So this will become a one. And then this is just a one. So let's just run this. So now count, uh, here you go. Count is one and then count is one. So you could indeed use this variable and the increment and decrement operator to know how many times has this been printed, right? Let's just say that you want to know, okay, I want to know how many times did the user get this message, right? So you put this count here, and then we put a bunch of pluses in the end. So let's just go here, 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 and then here. So now when you run this, you say, okay, well, the first message would be what? It went from zero, and then the next one, okay, now it's been one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So you're counting 
at the end of the of the showing of the message. And if you put this in the beginning, then we would actually start from what? We would go from one, two, three, and so on. So the plus plus and the minus minus operators, they are useful to count things. And if you use the plus plus operator inside of some statement, inside of some line of code, if the operator ha happens at the end of the variable, then the increment will occur at the end of the statement. But if the increment or decrement operator happens to be in the beginning, right before the variable, then first the variable gets incremented or decremented, and then the statement gets run, okay? So they are quite simple operators. And again, these are operators that are non-existent in every programming language. This is something of a C++. In fact, I believe that's where the name comes from, C++, because C++ was built on top of C. So C++, you can think of it as the next iteration. So they went up by one. And that's I, I believe that's where the name comes from. And so they made this uh, nice operator that it's quite useful. And I introduce it now because we are getting close to starting to write the different types of programming structures. And therefore, these are used quite a lot in those programming structures. However, you could definitely just ignore these and simply go back to count. And then this would be equals count plus one, right? And just as a little bonus uh, to wrap up this video, what if you did not have this operator? What if you wanted to replicate what we did here without using this operator? Well, you would have to come here Right, and if if count is plus plus, right? If count is plus plus before the variable, then you would do you would do this, right? You will add one, you will add one, and then you print it, right? But and let's get rid of this so we don't get confused. So what I'm trying to say is, imagine that I want this behavior. What do you do without using the increment or decrement operator? Well, to do this behavior, I would first have to add one to count, right? That's how it would be. Okay, what if I wanted to do this behavior, plus plus after the variable? Well, that means I would have to add one after. So this would be like that, right? So definitely you don't need the plus plus or the minus minus operator. You can do it without them. But, you know, again, we saved one line of code by simply just doing this. So it's a nice thing, and if you ever see some C++ code, it is almost very, very likely that you will see it, and there's other programming languages that support the increment and decrement operators. All right? I hope you found this video useful. If you did and you don't mind, leave a like. If you're new to this channel, check out this video series. Check out the channel, and if you like what you see in there, subscribe, be safe, and peace out.